morning, good afternoon, and a very good evening to you, the good and wonderful people of the tube. Hope you're today, hope you're Grant, and all well in your world. Hello, everybody. Uh, welcome to a &Q Wednesday, everybody. Let's get to question one today, shall we? Okay, so question one today is, uh, do you like the band Incubus, and have you ever learned any of their songs? Uh, yes, I do like Incubus. Um, I don't listen to them anywhere near as much as I used to. I'm just putting my phone on silent because I'm starting to learn. Better late than never, oh, people of you. I used to listen to Incubus a lot more than I do now. I still really like them when I hear them, but they're not a band I really listen to a great deal. I did learn quite a few of their songs back in the day, but I don't really remember any of them now because I just... I, I, it's been such a long time since I was kind of uh, in it, like massively into them to want to actually learn their songs that I don't actually remember how to play any of their songs. Uh, my favourite Incubus song is The Warmth. I love that song. That's definitely my favourite. And I, I learned it years and years ago. I think I've learned that song twice because I kept forgetting it. Because, again, I learned it and then never played it again. Because you have to have the effects set up in a certain way uh, and everything. And I, I just got a bit kind of, like, fed up... Um, with kind of like not having the effects right. And because it, it, it's an, a heavily effects laden song, The Warmth, it just it just kind of like, nah, I'm, I mean, I, it wasn't for me. But I do love Incubus. I love Mike. He's an amazing guitarist. He really is. He's very innovative. I, I like his use of pedals and sounds and stuff like that. It's really, really cool. Um, they're a great band. They just, yeah, they are. I mean, I remember like, you know, listening to Science and Wish You Were Here and and stuff like that, and then Crow Left of a Murder later on, and stuff like that. Um, and I really like them. I really do. I really like them as a band. I think they're really, really cool. I like the fact they've constantly evolved as well. You know what I mean? What they were in the early days is not what they are now, and I, I like that, because they've they've grown, if that makes any sense. Instead of just kind of like sticking where they were, they've really grown, and I like that, and it's really, really cool. But I, I do like Incubus, yeah. I don't remember any of their songs. I know. I remember bits. I can remember like bits of Mexico and Wish You Were Here and probably if I was pushed to it, little bits of the warmth, but not really. Um, I know stuff like, you know, um, talk shows on Mute and Megalomaniac and uh, you know, stuff like that. I, I don't really remember a great deal of their stuff to be honest. Drive, I kind of remember Drive a bit. But I don't really play that stuff anymore, so it kind of it's kind of gone out of my mind, if you will. So, um, but I'd still rate Incubus. I still really like Incubus. Uh, they're not a band I listen to a lot anymore, but I still highly rate them. I still love them. I still love listening to them when I hear them. Um, earlier this year, I remember my sister was round at um, my house, and well, uh, where I where I live, and uh, we ended up watching the Morning View sessions live gig. Uh, they did. And my god, it, it, they're so good in that gig. It's just unreal. They're so tight and together, and everything just sounds so amazing. But they're, oh, they're amazing, absolutely amazing. I really, I really like Incubus. Anyway, but uh, yeah, I do. Uh, I say my favorite song is "The Warmth." But again, I did learn some of their songs, but I don't remember them anymore. It's just, yeah, you know, it, again, they just slip. Yeah, you, you just don't remember these things if you don't play them. You know, it just becomes like. Um, you know, if you're not using it practically every day, things just kind of drift from you, and that and that's the way that guy goes. And you know, and, and if it does drift, invariably it means you're not practicing it enough. In, and if you're not practicing it enough, you ask you have to ask yourself eventually, do you? Does it matter to you? And I, as much as I love Incubus, knowing how to play their songs over learning other songs, it, it didn't really kind of like make it much difference to me. To be honest with you, I'd, I would much rather sacrifice my ability of learning the warmth for a song. Like, I don't know, Scar Tissue is the only one that came to mind. Or or another song, you know what I mean? Um, you know, just just because. Because uh, there's certain songs, I think, as guitarists, we always learn and go, oh, I really want to learn that. And then you learn it, and then you kind of like, meh. And you kind of just forget it, because it just doesn't enter back into your conscious things. And you learn for other things, and it kind of goes away. Because, again, you know, everything on a guitar, everything on any instrument, really, is a perishable skill. So, you know, if you don't, kind of keep on with it, you know, it will disappear, so to say. Anyway, uh, so I hope that's such a question. I'm going to move on to question two now. Two. I'm between my fingers. That's a bit weird. Anyway, okay, so question two today is, and I want you to chime in on this one, people of YouTube. So question two, part one, is have you ever sold a piece of gear and regretted it? Yes. Far too many times. Far too many times have I sold things and gone. 
what have you done? Um, there's a lot of pieces that spring to mind. My Red Revelation hollow body thin line. Uh, should never have sold that. Never should. Uh, shouldn't have sold my my Rory Gallagher uh, signature. Uh, well, copy a Squire strap that I made. I should never should have sold that. Never should have sold my. Um, what else was it? My gold top vintage as well. I never should have got rid of that. But hey, um, amp wise, I don't. I don't have many amps. I wish I hadn't sold. To be honest with you. Uh, I wish I didn't have to sell my Gibson Les Paul that I used to own. I used to own a, a Gibson R7. Uh, dark back, gold top, Les Paul. Heaven. Amazing guitar, but... Money problems, and I could shift it quick because it was a Gibson, and it would give me more money to bail me out uh, where I, what I needed to pay for, which is my van at the time. So it, it, it went, and that, that helped with that. But uh, I miss that guitar massively. That is one of those guitars where I'm really, like, I really miss it. Um, but yeah, my, my Red Revelation, I shouldn't have sold that one. That was stupid. My Gold Vintage, yeah, that's stupid. But again, I think we've all got these um, regrets and, and, and silly decisions we make. And, and maybe not even silly decisions, to be honest with you, because none of mine was... Well, apart from the Revelation, the Revelation was a silly decision because I didn't need to sell it and I shouldn't have sold it. I sold it on a whim. Uh, the others I sold to fund something else mainly to do with me either you know uh I, I remember i sold quite a lot of stuff to, to kind of um for dental work in in the past and obviously my van as well traveling around and stuff like that because uh, you got to prioritize sometimes you know you do have to prioritize sometimes and sometimes things just have to certain guitars or amps or pedals they have to come secondary to where you are and you have to make the tough decision to keep them or sell them you know and, and um unfortunately some of the stuff is kind of like you know gone that way but my biggest regret is my red revelation to be honest with you um i missed that guitar it was an amazing guitar and i really shouldn't have sold it very stupid very very stupid and god only knows where it is i did i i did have ch well i didn't have chance to buy it back that's a lie Be but it did come up for sale twice actually well it came up for sale once locally to me on facebook marketplace and it came up for sale on ebay but each time i didn't have the money to afford to buy it back and my Red Revelation was very, very recognisable because it had a white scratch plate. Uh, because I took the tortoiseshell down. I, I, I wanted it white. Um, I mean, technically I wanted it uh, mint green, but you know. Um, Revelation, you need to do mint green scratch plates. Uh, but I sanded it white because I didn't like the tortoiseshell kind of look. It didn't, it did, I, I, didn't, I didn't like it with the, uh, the, the, uh, the Fiesta Red. So I sanded it down. So it was very, very recognisable. It really was. God only knows where it is now. Uh, could be anywhere. Um, but like I say, there was that chance to buy it back. But again, at that time, I didn't have any money. I couldn't have afforded to buy it. And, you know, them's the brakes, really, isn't it? But um, people of the tube, have you ever sold gear that you regretted? And if so, what was it? Let us know in the comment section below. Because I know we've all got these stories of like a guitar we sold or a pedal or an amp. You know, uh, we've all got those things of going, oh, why, why did I do that? You know, it really, yeah, there's a lot of those kind of like moments. But again, sometimes you have to do it for, you know, for you know financial reasons or, or, or whatever. You know, uh, sometimes it's not motivated because you want to sell it. You just have to, you know, and invariably that's where I've been over the years. It's kind of like, you know, when I've sold things that I've kind of really gone, oh, I don't really want to sell this. It's mainly because of a financial issue or, or something along those lines that I've had to just get rid of that piece of gear. Uh, my biggest one is my Gibson R7. I miss that guitar every day. Uh, I really do. And it's it, 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 it's one of those holes. You know, it's a bigger hole than the Revelation just because I had such a connection with that guitar. I, got, I bought it from Old Hat, actually. And um, before I worked there, and I don't know if I've told this story before, but uh, it came in in a shipment they got. And I was there the day that um, my friend John, who worked at the shop, unboxed it and got it out. And it's a gold top Les Paul with a dark back. Be still, my beating heart. It, it, it was just like, oh my God. Oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. And I'd never seen a real gold top at that point. I'd seen uh, like Cherry Sunburst ones and and, 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 and like uh, white, tr uh, white uh, studio Les Pauls. I had never seen a real gold top Les Paul with a dark back uh, until that point. 
And um, so I was just immediately like, I need to play that. I need to play that. I played that thing in the shop for six hours straight. And I was just like, I've got to have it. I've got to have this guitar. I just have to have this guitar. It was the same feeling as I got with the 62 Strat. It was that same kind of thing. But again, being like two and a, a two and a half grand guitar, it'd be worth a lot more now. But being a two and a half grand guitar at the time, it was just like unreachable. But at that time, I had put a bit, a fairly decent down payment on a Gibson Les Paul special, TV yellow special with two P90s, uh, double cutaway, very cool guitar, but I wanted the gold top more because I'm a gold top fanatic. So I said, and I kind of made a deal with um, Norman, the owner of Old Hat. I said, can I transfer that money over to the gold top and then I'll pay the gold top off? And Norman agreed. He went, yeah, yeah of course you can. And um, he let me take the guitar before I had paid for it. And he just let me come in. Like I, I went in kind of every week and, and uh, every week. Yes, every week and paid more off to, uh, you know, to help fund the thing. But, um, you know, if it was 20 quid here or 30 quid or 40 quid or 100, whatever, whatever I could make, basically. I was gigging quite a lot of the time as well, so I wasn't raking it in by any stretch of imagination, but I I was able to make certain payments on, on the thing. And, and plus, it was a gigging guitar. I used it live all the, As soon as I got it, it was it was out with me all the time, and I used it every gig. Uh, invariably for Finn Lizzy songs or slower blues tracks. It really, I loved it so much. I've got a picture of it somewhere. I just don't know where it is. Um, and I, I, I just basically just kind of um, was gradually paying it off and paying it off and paying it off. And I had it for about a year, I believe, or maybe just under a year, give or take. And uh, this would have been 2009. Yes, yeah, it'd been 2009. And I don't remember exactly why I sold it. Oh, no, it was the van. Uh, the van I had at the time went a bit kind of, well, went loopy. Its engine seized, and we had to pay for an entire engine rebuild that was going to cost in the region of, I can't remember how much, but it was somewhere in the thousands, let's put it that way. And um, obviously, I had to pay for that. Otherwise, you know, how was I going to get to gigs to earn money? You know, so... Fortunately, I, I took I took the Les Paul back to Old Hat. I, I hadn't paid it all off at that point, so I took it back to Old Hat, and they very graciously gave me my money back that I had paid, and that went towards the van, and the gold top literally three or four days later sold again and disappeared, and it was gone forever. Because my brain was thinking, maybe, maybe if I put it back in the shop, no one will buy it, and then hopefully you know, one day I can maybe buy it again. But it wasn't to be, and it's gone. And uh, I don't remember the serial number, which really upsets me. Uh, I just remember I had such a connection with that gold top then. I have yet to play a gold top Les Paul that made me feel that way. Um, my revelation is my perfect Les Paul, apart from it's not gold and it's not a dart bag. But that Gibson, it really had something special about it. And to a point, I mean, I've, I've tried loads of Gibsons after that. When I was working in Old Hat, we had a fair chunk of gold top Les Paul Gibson ones, R7s, uh, originals, and not a single one of them felt like that one did. None of them sounded that way, none of them felt that way, none of them spoke to me that way. And uh, so that that's my biggest uh, regret of gear I had to sell. But again, it was financially motivated to get my van back on the road so I could actually gig and earn money. Because uh, that was, you know, that's what I've done. That's my, that's my entire, as soon as I started playing music, that was my life. You know, this is what I do. And if I can't get to a gig, I can't earn money. And if I can't earn money, I can't live. And that's just, you know, it's just stupid at that point. So priorities. And so it went. Uh, but I'm sure we've all got stories like that. It's it's naff and it is what it is. But it's, it's heartbreaking. It really is when you look back and think. And especially, you know, and the funny thing was as well, my van maybe lasted another two years and then totally broke down totally. So I paid all that money uh, to get the engine rebuilt. Come to think of it, it wasn't even that long. 2012, No, it was about two years. After About two years later, the van just totally, my, my initial van, I had a Vauxhall combo, just crashed and burnt and that was game over at that point. Um, 
so that was that and then obviously you know more stuff you know yeah. anyway but yeah i missed that goal top that was my that's my biggest regret that one uh next and the next one down from that is my revelation but you know these things happen Anyway, uh, last part of question two is, what do you think of Robin Trower? Uh, really loved Robin Trower. Great, great guitarist. Love his playing. Love his tone. Um, you know, he's just very, very awesome. I mean, I'm not the biggest mega fan of his. and I'm, I don't listen to his music a great deal at all, but I respect him. And I like his playing, and he's a very tasteful player, and I really love his music. It's really cool, and when I do listen to it, I'm like, oh, this is great. But I don't listen to it a great deal. But I do like him as a player um his tone is to die for it's such a great strat tone oh my god is it amazing you know and i just love the way these kind of holds on notes and stuff like that and he's got a great vibrato and a great phrasing to him it's just immense absolutely immense but yeah i really i really i do i do i definitely rate robin trials guitar is amazing I, again i don't listen to his stuff a lot but i do love it Okay, um, so yeah, uh, that's it for this Q&A Wednesday, everybody. I will see you again tomorrow for A&Q Thursday. Uh, until then, um, yeah, if you want to uh, if you want to support the uh, channel, by the way, uh, in the link dis uh, in the description box below, there is a link to my Patreon. Uh, with YouTube being weird at this point in time, uh, if you want to become a Patreon, please follow that link. I really, really appreciate it. My Patreon's on there at this point in time. You're all legendary. I love you all very much. Thank you very much indeed. I really appreciate it. It really helps. It really does. And uh, yeah, it's, I'm just so grateful. I have no words to describe how grateful I am to my, my, patrons on, my patrons on Patreon. That's really hard to say. So yeah, uh, if you want to support the channel, um, you know, uh, link, link is below to my Patreon. Uh, if you want to submit a question for a &Q Wednesday or Thursday now, uh, description box below has an email link. Email me there and I will get to it. Um, uh, well, I'll go through sequentially. Uh, other than that, I will see you again tomorrow for another a &Q. And uh, yeah, until then, have a great morning, afternoon, good evening, and uh, goodbye now. Thank you for watching. Goodbye now.